welcome back to Do Bro. It's your boy DJ Ivory, and I'm with my main man, Alias Fresh, Fresh the God, Fresh the Genius. Woo. And today we are going to talk about my man, your friend, and quite arguably now Most the legend <laughs> in the in the country. Legend. Yes. Colin Kaepernick. Colin, take a knee, Kaepernick. The man has now ascended to Ali status when it comes to athletes. It's very yeah. interesting. Yeah, he's on his uh, Very political... interesting. Very interesting. Because it really doesn't matter if he gets a job or not now. Because oh. the NFL has made him a martyr. Yeah. And what we have seen in this past week has been, wow. Really this past 36 hours, we have seen people go from I'm never taking a knee yeah. to going down on both knees. We've gone from... <laughs> I'm a owner, and yeah. I'm. I want them all out of here. Let's get these sons of bitches out of here. So that was to, Trump. Now we got owners, arm in arm, kneeling with the squad. So Jimmy it's a lot. He, he a lot can change, up, right? Yeah. A lot can change. But now, what does this really have to do with Colin Kaepernick? I think that's really the biggest yeah. issue, because. A little over, is it about a year now? About a year ago? So, yeah, last season, uh, 2016 NFL season, um, this was kind of arguably Collins, well, it wasn't arguably, it was his last season as a quarterback. But it's arguable of the reasons why it was his last season. So it's, it's a lot but of... But it was about a year ago. This was last season. Okay. I believe this was last season this all happened. Um, he took a knee during the national anthem. And I know now it's kind of been like just a viral phenomenon where everything from Sports Center to like CNN is like taken over by... by uh, Basically, like race war talks. Like they're really trying to turn this and stir this into like, ah, white people hate black people, black people hate white people, and it's going down. But one of the um, one of the just to put that out there, one of the uh, kind of foundations that the news is built upon is that we're going to hell in a handbasket, and that's what sells. So keep that in mind. Okay, I can get that. I yeah. can dig that. Yeah. Whenever I think about the news, I'm I uh, thank God for Ron Burgundy. <laughs> What's happening in your world tonight? A La Jolla man clings to life at a university hospital after being viciously attacked by a pack of wild dogs in an abandoned pool. Why does that movie San have a special Diego? place in my heart? Not only because I happen to be from San, San Diego, Diego yes. but because the whale's vagina. if you've seen Anchorman <laughs> 2, there's going to be a scene where they're clearly spoofing the OJ um, trial and the Bronco chase. Right. But what's very interesting about that is that's the first time that a live TV broadcast of a car chase was going on. And they go up and they play a nice little bit and they talk about how now the news is interesting. And they flash to the common man who's like, I don't know, but the, the news is finally reporting on something I want to see. Yeah. So the real news, quote unquote, kind of gets pushed to the side. And then we get a whole bunch of car chases and puppy dogs and cats and trees and old ladies. Which yeah, people love is, to see. It's just bullshit. These love to see, but, you know, it's not really news anymore. But I digress. Yes, yeah. So if we're talking about the news, unless you've been in a hole, they're really not lying too much to you this, this time. There has been a torrent, a venerable avalanche of kneeling. <laughs> It is not just whole teams. the NFL. Yeah, yeah. Whole it's leads. not just one person. No, no, no. We got We're Twitter talking, beef. We've oh, got, no, we've got mean, basketball. Yeah. Baseball, we've got baseball. Oh, everything. We've got little leagues. We've got high schools. We've got colleges. So what we've actually had from Kaepernick is a full-on movement. Mm -hmm. Taking a knee has become something bigger than the man. So again, Kaepernick, any, your, your job has kind of been done, sir. You took a stand when it was the right time, at the right time, and apparently you were the right man for the job. So history will definitely remember you in an interesting way, sir. I'm excited to see how this turns out, but we cannot downplay the fact that there's kneeling everywhere. So let's ask the question, why are they kneeling? And, and well, then what we is this all about? We also need to also mention that you've got one side kneeling and then you've got a whole uproar of angry, uh, more or less white people who uh, are just like, they're up in upheaval. They're just like, this has got to stop. And it's like, this is disrespectful to the um, national anthem. Now, 
if that national anthem represented all of us equally, then I would agree that yes, we, we should represent our country maybe. If it was a country that was really kind of looking out for us equally and trying to make a home for us that was safe, I'd be like, absolutely. But we have to kind of not be so ignorant and naive as um, white Americans because it's like, do we really gonna sit here and pretend like black people aren't dying in alarming numbers and we're just sitting back and nothing, nothing's happening about it, the cops get off? Are we just gonna sit here and be like, oh, you know, uh, you know, they, they, they have every right we do in this country. It's, it's awesome. It's, it's laughable because it's like we know for a fact that, you know, while they might be amazing athletes of all races and particularly African-Americans are just dominating sports in general right now. And maybe people don't like the... the, the Always. The, yeah. Not right now. Yeah, okay. In Always. general. I mean, we can go back. Continue. Yeah. Thank you. But I'm... And, and, and um, it's, it's just like there's really nothing to be mad about because it's like life is a lot like the football field. We're all out here. We're all trying to catch the ball, and we're all trying to get back to the end zone. You might be playing with, with people who are Asian. You might be playing with people who are Latin. It doesn't. Are you going to look at that as less of a human right. being? You're going to look at that as a teammate. And so right. that's why sports is a great place for unity and all these things to come together because it, it's kind of a perfect storm of, of politics and beautiful faces and money, propaganda. It's a machine. It's a well-oiled machine that's owned by a bunch of old like Zionists, and it's insane. So this is kind of where people need to step back from what we've been fed and what the propaganda machine is going to try to have us do and that's like you know basically self-destruct and world war three all this other bullshit which we need to just kind of take a chill pill and be like hey let's address the real issue which is let's respect people from all walks of life let's not disrespect people and let's listen to the plight before we're like oh that's just bullshit they're kneeling for no reason well no one wants to the country no one Read wants to national anthem. disrespect it's racist. no one likes that like but that. why is Kaepernick kneeling so he's rather, and, and so he's not and, oh, and, and so this is a whole what different thing. About? So apparently Kaepernick, he's not even kneeling from the fact that the national anthem is just inherently racist. Oh. It's it's actually the fact that black children and, and, and men are dying at alarming rates from cops. Interesting. So police brutality. Is you're telling so let me get this straight. In in reality, this whole kneeling thing has nothing to do with the flag. Kaepernick said nothing about the flag. He said, first of all, the reason I'm kneeling is because there's bodies in the streets. Yeah. Bodies in the streets. Now, me. obviously, yeah. the flag got quoted because he's like, well, why aren't you kneeling? They're talking about the flag. But that's not the point. He used the opportunity to bring to attention the fact that black people were dying every day and people were walking away with paid leave and pensions and mm. GoFundMe accounts and mm. becoming millionaires. What is that about? So now I want to ask you, why is he kneeling? So now, Cap made why, it very Why would he clear. not be kneeling is the real question. Cap made it very clear. Yeah. He said, I'm kneeling for this reason. Black lives matter. Why? Because I want to be alive and I'm black and I don't like this. There's bodies in the streets. Again, bodies in the streets. But America seems to have an awkward necrophilia when it comes yeah. to black bodies. They yeah. love to see black bodies only when they're dead. It's very curious. They love to consume the pictures. They're going to live stream it. They will show it to you 50 Strange million friend, times. Man. But you will not see mm. other races in that manner. Yeah. But I digress. Makes me sad. So Cap, he's kneeling. He's kneeling for police brutality. Bodies in the streets. Powerful words. Powerful yeah. words. So fast forward to today, right? You're a year and a half later now. Or maybe We're maybe looking at yeah. all kind of people are kneeling. It's, uh, it's, Why are they kneeling now? It's a fad now. And What uh, happened? It's what gone all the way to the White House with, uh, with Trump's comment of, mm. I'd fire all those sons of bitches, is what he called it. To see one of these NFL owners, when somebody disrespects our flag, to say, get that son of a bitch off the field right now, out, he's fired. He's fired! And, and the fact you refer to them as sons of bitches, that's disrespectful to their moms. That's a crazy, another racial, I'm sure a racist punch that he's throwing out there, a little jab. Because you, know you know how racists like Look, that. Look, I'll tell you right now. Yeah. It's a racist jab, I feel like. It's when he like, said man. get the, everybody saw, he paused with an <laughs> opportune time where it was clearly oh. he was going to, you, you could just write, get back, the niggers out of there. That's what you were hearing. And at the end of the yeah. day, he's, he's speaking back. to his constituents. Yeah. There's a certain amount of people who practice their racism and they practice it in a certain way. They like their steaks rare and he's <laughs> going to give it to you bloody. So yeah, that's part trill. of the game. And it's a game. Don't get it twisted. But again, yeah. that's not what we are talking about. 
And I would like to point out the fact that this whole thing has been very, very slickly co-opted. Yeah. Because now crafty. I have to ask myself, why are you kneeling? Because I, uh, before it was quite clear you were kneeling because you did not like the fact that there were black people dying in the streets, that police were getting away, yeah. that race soldiers were out there gunning people down, Baltimore and they were going away from I mean, free. it was going down, yeah. I mean, it was riots and That stuff. was something that you said, I'm not down with that. And a lot of people were catching hell. Yeah. And now, all of a sudden, the president says some very colorful words on Twitter, and then comes out with a great speech. Again, more colorful words. <laughs> and now we see a slew of Neils and protests. Yeah, and right now. Yeah. LeBron James wants to all of a sudden know everything there is to know about Black Lives. The- yeah, so um, as I got this platform and as I, people, I have a, a way to inspire and I have a way for my word to be, to be bond. Um, I will lend my voice, I will lend my passion, I will lend my money, um, I will lend my resources to my youth and, and my inner city and outside of my inner city to let these kids know that, you know, there is hope, there is, uh, there's greater walks of life. He's the most it? articulated athlete now when it comes to um, the whole, the whole, like, kind of, the movement, I guess you could say. But what happened when there are bodies in the streets? I remember when there were bodies in the streets and they were asking well, even now, LeBron. I mean, shit, yeah, I mean, they were talking to LeBron about yeah. that and LeBron didn't have anything to say. He said, I didn't know enough about it. <laughs> he tweets some stuff about Trump and Curry and, you know, you're a bum. Mm. And he has these quote unquote. Curry can't go to the White House? Like, why Curry? Like, why do you think why, Curry? Again, why would you well, all of a he's sudden. He's the most wholesome, clean cut, like, <laughs> hating on Curry. Again, let's look at the narrative. Yeah. Why all of a sudden, Mr. James, are you having critiques for the president now? Mm. Mm. And your critique is because of Steph Curry going to the White House? What about all the repugnant things he said before that? And yeah, what about the bodies in the street? And like, what about the real issue? So yeah, this is more what I'm gleaming from this is just like all the other bullshit news we get is, it's that slanted news. It's that liberal bias mixed with that Nazi propaganda. It's what we've been doing since World War II and even before that when, when we had these people who have been financing both sides of every motherfucking war. Hmm. It's, it's a divine conquer strategy. Our, our president just happened, number 45 just happens to be the most polarized president ever, I'd say. He, I rock with you up until you talk about polarizing and yada, yada, yada. Yeah. Obama was just as polarizing. It was just in the opposite direction. Or rather, it was yeah. not the opposite well, direction. Oh, well, I'm, but, different feeling. Let me, let me, before that, Bush yeah, was polarizing. Well, it's always the same thing. The game has never changed. One thing I will say, though, about... I feel like they're taking to new levels, though. Of course, of it's, course. It's new highs. That's what of I'm trying to say. That's why I say he's the most. Of course, Obama. We want to talk about polarity. <sighs> even then, if Obama, was, is, was, Obama yeah. is what neocolonialism looks like. But we're not even going to talk about <laughs> that. That's not even the issue. We're yeah. back to why are we kneeling. And I think this is very important. Because remember, there's a man who said, I will never, ever take a knee. Sure enough, he's now out there taking a knee with the squad. He, he took not <laughs> one, but two knees. Dual knee. Straight up. Complete submission, head down. Dang. Both knees. So you gotta ask yourself, Ray, what changed for you? What changed for LeBron? Yeah. Why is all of a sudden people so vocal? Well, I mean, anyone who's, hmm. anyone who's from, uh, um, you know, who, who, who's grown up in this country knows that racism exists. You can't, you can't hide it in this country. It's just, it's just everywhere. Okay, so if we are know this is true, yeah. would you say then when LeBron says, I don't know anything about that, he's clearly lying? He, is, he, is, he has an agenda. I mean, okay. he's part of the, that's I mean, he's a play, yeah. Three, if that's the case, then why now are people deciding to, quote unquote, talk about racism as if it is a new thing? I think if everybody's quite aware of it, it's kind of like where I was going with the whole like, I mean, I guess that's the whole thing I'm saying with this polarity thing where everything now is like to divide us even on the micro levels. Like we're if we weren't divided enough on terrorism and, and religion now, it's like and, and already what they had with the race stuff that was already going on. I know you thought it was going to be a calm episode, people, but it is going down as <laughs> always. It's dude, bro. You man, at least fresh, fresh guy, fresh genius. And this is Manistee Ivory. Just wanted to give you a little bit of time to dial back in. If you need to yeah. get yourself a drink. 
If you do, grab yourself some snacks, because apparently this is going to be a long episode. Oh, uh, you know, not doing Back much. at it. Yeah, so anyway, yeah. what you were saying. Yeah, so... Know, give it to him, Ron. No I'm, chopping. I'm, no I'm, chopping, I'm definitely... I'm, I'm personally fed up with it. I guess I'm sick of s- passively sitting around with, with my, my friends, who particularly my wife friends, who just think it's okay to, like, hmm. just disrespect the lives of a whole nation of people. And, and uh, I, I, I don't know, I probably may be luckier than a lot of people because I know a lot of people are real comfortable with when they drop all their little racist stuff when they kick it. Damn. Why are you kneeling? People are dying. And no one is addressing that fact, which I believe points to it seems like they're not covering, the racism yeah, itself. Yeah, they, they because won't give you the whole story. No, because we are happy about black men dying. Mm. We do not want to stop that. We do want to change the narrative, though. So now we have people mad at Trump. Yeah. Instead of outrage over the death of black males, we now have an outrage of the white male. Yeah. In office. How could he say such things? How could those white cops kill them? So them now kids? How we have that? all these other people yeah. taking knees, mm-hmm. presumably under the guise of Kaepernick, but in reality, yeah. I feel like he's a front. It seems to me yeah. that no, he's not a front. They've co-opted or they're attempting to. Or co-opt yeah, sorry, they've, the they've yeah, yeah, they've they've used they've almost adopted what he did, and now they're using it for something else. Yeah, because yeah. already yeah. that's a good way to it that. was muddy for a lot of people who want to focus on the national anthem. Right. The, the reason I think they're doing it is, there we is go. why are they kneeling? Divine conquer, propaganda, mayhem, fight, set us just I don't know. It doesn't seem like it's doing what it should be doing. So it has nothing to do with Kaepernick. It at all. it should be div- it should be driving attention to the fact that we have a racial racist national anthem. From there we should stem. Hmm, maybe we should change it. Let's hire someone to make a new one. Cool. Because as it's, instead of trying to salvage this old one that obviously has racism attached to it, what would that do? Um, I think it would be what like problems with that stuff. It's the same thing we're doing with tearing down these Confederate statues where it's a start. It's like, you know, I personally don't have all the answers, but I feel like if we just continue this school of thought of, like, racism, bigotry, ignorance, I mean, we're going to blow our fucking selves up. Now, see, I'm in the camp that it would solve absolutely nothing. And here's why it would solve absolutely nothing. They found a new way to propagate racism. The problem racism. is not the national anthem. Yeah. No, it's not. He's not kneeling because of the national anthem. Which he stated. Yes. The whole point. That's is what that I'm saying should happen. <laughs> are dying yes. in the streets because of racism that, like people like to call white supremacy. But even that word within itself is racist. There's nothing <laughs> supreme. Right. But now we have an, yet another thing to focus on instead of the fact that there is a there's a system of racism in America yeah. that is not only costing us lots of money and life and sanity but ultimately yeah. our lives. Yeah, what what is even being gained by this? It's like who's gaining from this? It's a power play, my friend. Is it like to control people? Is that the main thing? Is it to scare people into obedience? Power play. Yeah. It's a power play. It is a power play. It's a chess move. Um, I don't think Kaepernick was meant to be a martyr. Yeah. When they made him a martyr, it was the gamble, but, you know, now he's a martyr. Do you think it was intentional then? Of course it was intentional. Okay. Yeah, so they wanted to create You can't this. accidentally yeah. not hire it. No, I mean, like, do you think they wanted to, like, create this rift? It's, 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 the, 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 the blowback is that was, like, kind of what they intended? Definitely not. This is yeah. not good for the NFL. Yeah, because, I mean, I actually people are losing money. It feels like just, like, the, the whole situation was they want sucks him now. to show. I mean, literally, the show game. sucks now. It's like a shit show. It's like the, the talent's not there. Every game's one-sided. You got fucking refs. The guys are pansies. They don't play in the rain no more. They don't play in the snow. They uh, every time there's a rain, it's like oh let's run out. It's just like it's it's just it's not the same sport. Everyone, they don't train hard, but they want to run at each other with their fucking heads. So you got a bunch of people who aren't quite as strong as they used to be with brain damage, even worse than before. So until the NFL figures out some way to deal with the fact that you know this concussion thing is real. We're going to see a lot more of uh, LeBron James. We're going to see a lot more of um, bandwagoning, Mm -hmm. if you will. Not to do anything other than, like you said, distract, but also to change the narrative toward one that America can control. Yeah, I mean, it's it's the same slam of news that you've been getting since day one, since, uh, you know, Rockefeller took control of the media. And that's basically like, there's always a war between Nazis and liberals, and they kind of call them Republicans and Democrats, but there's levels to these fucking parties. And really, 
They're about to stay all in bed together. I mean, I'm... it's it it follows a pattern. Yeah. Black Lives Matter was a similar situation where they changed. They almost tried. They tried to turn that into gay lives matter. Yeah, they hijacked it. Yeah. But we were able to. We being the black community, we were able to stop that from happening fully. Still, the still LGBTQ, kind of, yeah. ZBTA, whatever community is definitely heavily influenced in there. But last I checked, they're black too. Yeah. So at Black Lives Matter, that would probably include gay, trans, yeah, they're allowed to, they're allowed midget to that. lives But also. when the white gays start to so, judge themselves, like, well, we matter too, and the Asians and... The whole situation is... Yeah, that's, that's extreme. These, this happens. This is nothing new. When we look at the civil rights movement in general, you'll find that it was also hijacked and co-opted. Mm -hmm. The message was for one thing, and it now has turned to something completely Hijack the narrative, that's the key. Different. That's what they do. It's... The NAACP. And organizations like that were initially started for quote unquote colored people. Yeah. The reality of it is they're not those institutions now. And yeah. Yeah. whether they, get hijacked. they were yeah. meant to be that way is a completely different story. Where we are today is that everything that was in, meant to help African Americans, descendants of slaves, has been changed into some other thing. It's actually the narrative has been taken left. Yeah, and the NAACP, so, ADL, Anti Defamation League. I mean, all these these associations, which were made basically by like you know Jewish people actually, and and, and Zionists. Um, these are. I mean, you got to really see who's the anti defamation against. And they, they always are going to, they're opportunists. And a lot of people use this, like we said, with the gays, with uh, Black Lives Matter. And um, <clears throat> a lot of... Speaking of opportunists and Black yeah. Lives Matter and things of that nature, you're going to, particularly now, we're living in a time where you are going to have these kind of conversations. You're already having them. Yeah. I know you are. And so I would ask you to be a white ally. Yeah. Who do I mean by a white an ally? Well, as you can see, Eric is a white man. And probably a suspected racist. But you don't know unless you sit down and you ask your white friends, hey, are you racist? <laughs> and then you sure. guys can actually have a great conversation about that. You might be able to teach him something, maybe change his viewpoint, kind of wake people up. Because I don't think people really, a lot of times, even realize that they're racist. They just have these preconceived notions that are just racist. It's as we see, like, we don't respect black lives. People die in the streets all the time. Where cops get off, they get pensions. Something needs to give. I mean, it's time that we wake up and stop being ignorant because, I mean, turning a blind eye is not enough anymore My, to just Americans out there in general. We can't just sit back and be like, oh, yeah, no, well, that's just the way life is. It's not. No, it doesn't need to be like this. It's, there's solutions. And so the first solution that the dude bro's kind of throwing out there is be a white ally. And, uh, so white ally. Yeah. What is this mm -hmm, thing? Mm -hmm. What does it mean to be a white ally? Well, like I said, I talk to Eric. We're obviously having these conversations. I know you're talking to your friends. And maybe you're asking yourself, well, hey, I'm not racist. I'm not one of these crazy people. Yeah. Well, that's great. I, I'm happy that you are not. So how do you deal with that? And I'm going to say that you are probably trying to say, hey, well, I want to be a part of the fight. I'm going to get out here and fight mm -hmm. for equality. I don't like racism either. So, well, hey, then maybe you count yourself an ally. How do you become an ally? Well, you need to do things that are going to further the destruction of what we are now calling racism, white supremacy. Yeah. Now, obviously, there's nothing supreme about it. We can call it bigotry, but that's just not a strong enough word. And white supremacy has been dropped in the UN lately. But either way... Let's just call it allies. idiotic racism. How about that? How do you become an ally? Yeah. How do you become an ally? Well, we're trying to solve some problems here. <clears throat> One thing, Actually, too, is when you see racism happening, like, don't just stand by when your white, white friends are, like, you know, kind of making fun of, of people of other races. That's, that's, something that, that. that's something very common that I think you're going to go through if you're white, is you're going to sit around in a circle of white people who feel like they're comfortable enough around you to keep it real with you. Okay. And that's when they're going to let them know what they really think. And uh, that's when you let them know what you really think. White ally. What is a white ally? And this is definitely something that needs to be defined. And I'm going to be honest. Let's, show, run, let's roll that video, too, that one girl who's a white ally. Oh, that's classic. Yeah, we'll, we'll show you guys a video <laughs> real quick, too. This is good spirit. Of yeah. But at the end of the day, I am not the person to talk about this because I'm not white. So the whole situation here is 
somebody who is an ally is somebody who's with you in the fight. Yeah. But what does that mean as a white person? And I think this is something that white people definitely need to have that conversation with amongst each other. So I'm going to look to Eric and be like, hey, if you're one of these people who wants to yeah. be a quote-unquote white ally, then one of the things you need to do is talk to your friends about quote-unquote white privilege. You need to talk to them about racism. Yeah. You need to figure out, like, what can you guys do as white people? As, as uncomfortable as a lot of these things might be, it's it's the most important thing you can really do, especially if you actually want to see any progress. Because if, if, if us as uh, white Americans are going to sit around and we're going to continue to, like, literally just, like, you know, absorb so much African-American culture and then act like, oh, no, I don't like these people, though. I mean, what does that say about us as a culture? We're just going to, like, rape these people of their, their beauty and all this stuff, and then it's like not give them any credit for it. I, I mean, we've, this has been going on for a lot longer than people think, too. I mean, white people have been taking credit for African-American inventions dating way back. The shit's real. It takes place. It still takes place. you got people who are trying to continue this ignorant movement. But so again, solutions. We right? will, like yeah. Shit. How do you solve these things? Yeah. And one of the major issues is, again, I want to put out there that I'm not white, if you can't see that. So therefore, there's going to be a little bit of, there's obviously things that I can't do. But one thing yeah. I can do is point this out, and that is we need solutions to the problem. And the problem here is that we don't have power. We need a seat at the table. Everybody comes out there and gets their just dues. We have been underpaid, overworked for a very long time. There are all sorts of government programs that have been overlooking us to hold us back as a group. So one thing that quote-unquote white allies can do is to solve these problems. Get in there, talk. Call about them out. Yeah, when you when you see it, um, when you see hire some, some black people. Yeah, get us some jobs. Um, we're not looking for handouts because handouts are things that you don't get that you didn't earn. Yeah, but these are things yeah. that we have clearly earned. So yeah. when you have the conversation about you know reparations, when people are telling you know horrible jokes, obviously you want to get out there and say something. Yeah. But it goes beyond that. We need to get some education. We need some people to make some power moves. Mm -hmm. Because education is the key. That is. The words are nice. But they don't really change anything. Like, like Yoda said, we must unlearn what we've learned, and like on like a, and like the sooner the better. Because what you've learned growing up in this country is white privilege. You've learned slave master fucking thought processes that have been converted into school systems and Judeo Christianities and all this other bullshit. Where it's like Jesus ain't white. Face that shit. You know, there's a bunch of people out there who are good people. Don't base a whole race off one interaction you had with one individual. If you, if you met someone who was Asian or Arabic or Mexican and they rubbed you the wrong way, they're not, you can't base a whole fucking culture on one person. Unless you're black. In which case, every single white person Suspect you meet them. is a suspected yeah, racist. This is true for now. You need to look Until at them. Until proven otherwise. And approach them with extreme caution and make sure. That get out shit's real. That you so do all things necessary to make sure that you do not end up disappearing, yeah. dead, in the I can't breathe situation, yeah. some sort of altercation with the racist soldier, or in the dark place, yeah. you are a dead man or woman. So, yeah. other people, yes, I hear what you're saying, but again, all black people everywhere, descendants of slaves in America, be very, very weary of all individuals. But we can go on about this forever and day. So we're definitely doing another episode on this one. But I'm going to close this out if you don't mind. No, you're, that's it. That's All it. Right, so then we wanted to get the conversation rolling in this direction. We, we've kind of been hitting you with some conspiracy talk, and, and, and we kind of want to let you know what we really stand for, do bro. Above all the other stuff, we do like to expose a lot of the, the hidden stuff that's going on. We like to bring truth to situations, and most importantly, we want to bring truth to humanity. And the truth of humanity is that we're all just one race, and that's a human race. But until that keeps going on and we keep killing each other for the color of our skin and some more bullshit, we're never going to find any common ground. And uh, honestly, we're probably going to end up blowing ourselves up completely. So, um, definitely don't yeah. want that. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how to articulate that any more nicely, but, you know, it's time to grow up, America, and the world, and particularly white America. So, dear white people, grow the fuck up.
check. Versace apparel, I contact the barrel I live in a pyramid just like a pharaoh These birds they don't spit, they just swallow like sparrows I ride in the ghost of the mist like mascaros These demons love death and we sacrifice scary hoes My magic is very old, infecting your stereo And fuck at least every hoe We smoke in the finest row Started up young with a nose full of blow Game gadget wit with them cheese and them most Back on the boat we be moving kilos I'm gangsta like Gucci trap handles like Migos The metro was booming, young cuss full of evil The hearts are all black and they minds is deceitful And just like a church, yeah we steal from the people And just like them zannies them boss can be lethal You know the feel KJ Fred DJ Ivory We out